Hello and welcome to this screen capture video. To save some time, I'm going to do some uh, doubling up here. So this is for Roxana's section of Women in Gender Studies 1000B and for Asia 1000. This is just meant to recap some of the things that we covered in class quite quickly and it's something that you can refer back to anytime you need it. So the first thing we talked about, and it's the most important thing, is how to get help when you're looking for library resources. So the first place you're going to go, either physically or virtually, is this Ask Us button right on the home page of the library. And you'll notice here that there's lots of different ways to get in touch with us. Of course, you're more than welcome to come see us in person, and that is right at the entrance of the library when you come in. Um, and you can also get a hold of us in these other ways. Lots and lots of different options. And if you're ever wondering um, when the desk is staffed, if you just go over here to the library's hours, we can click on that. We can scroll down and go to the day and any time that it says the info desk is staffed, for example, uh, today it is 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., you'll be able to get immediate help. If not, just email that ask us instead and then the next time someone is on shift, they're going to be able to pick that up and get back to you. Even if you think something isn't library related, please come up to the desk or contact us and ask. We'll do our very best to get you where you need to be. Over on the side here, we have some quick links. I wanted to quickly point out, once again, the Writing Center. So if you feel that you'll need some assistance with writing this year, take a look at the Writing Center's website about their appointments, their consultation process. The Writing Center is in the library, but they're their own autonomous unit with their own policies, so check that out. Just remember there's lots of people here on campus who can help you. Another one of the most popular ones is the Citing Sources one. So you can go and you can click here anytime and depending on your citation style, whether it's Chicago, uh, MLA, APA, you can go in here and you can get some help with that as well. So let's just go back to the library homepage. In addition to getting help in person, we also have a lot of really great self-serve guides. So if we just click here on the Guides tab, and we went through this in class, but I'll just do a quick preview again. This first column takes you through uh, pretty much the entire process when you're working on your assignment. This planning your research one is really great, especially if you struggle with getting sort of a researchable topic. How do I know if it's too broad, too narrow? There's some great tips. If you need some information on how to find things, because remember, it's, it can be slightly different than Google, you're going to go and just re-familiarize yourself with some of these finding ones. The evaluate sources one is a big one. So especially for those of you that are kind of new to scholarly sources, this will help you determine whether something is a peer-reviewed journal article or a different kind of article. Of course, there's the writing your papers one. There's some good stuff in here, so take a look at that. Understanding plagiarism, and again, there's our citing sources one. We also have in the third column uh, guides that cover how to find really specific types of resources. So for Asia 1000, I know you are going to be watching quite a few films and videos, so you can feel free to take a look at that. Anything else here that you may need, go ahead and look at that. And then of course the middle column is the one that's made by your subject librarians. So each major field of study at the University of Lethbridge will have guides made by those subject librarians, and we're the ones responsible for all the information literacy sessions that we come into your class, also the collections, and working with your faculty members to make sure that the library has the resources to support you in your field of study. And um, I'm just going to go and take a look at this one. Now this is really important for women and gender studies in particular because we go into lots of different fields of study, so think about who is talking about your topic and go from there. Of course, if you want women and gender studies specific resources, pop open social sciences. We'll just scroll this down and there is a guide here specific to women and gender studies. I'll just click on that right quickly. And here's our guide for women and gender studies. Again, I have given you a prompt to ask for help, but if you need me, go ahead and email me. Email is the best way to find me. In addition, I also have a direct to me chat 
feature on my LibGuide. So if this is ever lit up green, that just means I'm in the system and I'm doing something interruptible and you are more than welcome to contact me. But again, email is definitely the best way to get in touch with me. So I mentioned that um, Glenda's section of Asia 1000 is going to be looking for videos. I wanted to let you know that you have a really good way for looking for videos. Our people in our IT department in the library came up with this video recording search widget. So we can just click there. And this will narrow your search so that you're not seeing all that other stuff that you don't want to see. And we can go ahead and we can type in the name of our movie. This can either be DVD or in one of our many streaming resources. So I'm looking for a documentary called Painted Nails. And it's going to do a targeted search just for video recordings. And I can see right here is my documentary and if I want to watch that online I can go ahead and do so. So let's just go back here. Now I'm going to replicate the search I did with you in class. So I would mentioned that uh, on my social media feed one of the stories that was blowing up a couple of weeks ago was the revelation that a lot of potential Japanese women doctors aren't getting in because their scores are being change to keep them out of medical school. Um, we briefly discussed um, in Women and Gender Studies 1000 with Roxana how the peer review process takes time. So if this story just broke, there's not going to be any journal articles really specific to this because we'd need time to get through that process. But that doesn't mean I can't take a look and see what's going on in the larger context and also historically. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to do a search. Now, we talked about as well that despite the notion that everything's available online and it's for free, when it comes to academic information, that's really not true. And sometimes when you're out on Google, you'll do a search and you'll find a perfect article and then they'll try to charge you money for that. So you're not going to do that. You're going to come through the library homepage, see if we've got a copy for you that we pay for with our licenses. And if not, if there's enough time, maybe you can interlibrary loan it. So with no further ado though, let's just do our search. So searching is again a little bit different. I'm not going to type in a question or a big long phrase. What I have to do is I need to boil down my topic to its most basic concepts. Now this is where things get interesting. I actually wouldn't put in Japanese women. Um, and this is really important for both Women and Gender Studies 1000 and especially for Asia 1000 is knowing how li the library system deals with uh, keywords, especially in relation to specific areas of the world. So what we do is we put in the nation and not the nationality. So in this case, we're putting in Japan. Anytime that we've got more than one concept, we're going to put the word and in between it and I'm going to put in Japan and women as opposed to Japanese women. And for this one, I'm looking for information about how uh, things are for female doctors there. So I'm just going to do a broad search. This is our library resource called Summon. It's called a discovery layer. And what it's doing is it's trying to search for a whole bunch of different things. So I'll do my search right now, see what happens. I came up with over 200,000 results. So that is typically a really good sign to me that maybe I have to be more precise with my keywords or I have to add a few more. But what I like to do as well is take a, a really quick scan of the first couple of results that come in and see if anything is interesting to me. So if I'm thinking about some of the barriers that Japanese women face when they are either trying to become doctors or when they actually become doctors, this could potentially be something I want to see. I want you to get into the habit of popping open this more detail. Now there's a couple of reasons for that. First off, I'm going to be able to see the abstract. So that is basically a spoiler for the article. It's going to tell me exactly what happened and what they were studying. And I'll know pretty quickly if I'm on the right track. 
All of my information that I need to do my citation is sitting right here, but what I really want to see are the subject headings, the keywords that they have applied to this particular topic. So I can see here instead of doctors, they said physicians, so I'm definitely going to swap that out. And I'm just going to take a look and see some of the other really specific subjects that they've applied and I'm going to steal them and use them for my own search. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in a few more. So if I'm thinking about the barriers, I'll put that in. And of course, I'm thinking about equity, so I'm going to do that too. Now I'm going to do another quick search. Eventually it will come up, I hope. Well, this is embarrassing. There we go. So that brought me down from 200,000 to close to 8,000. So it's still a lot. And I'm starting to get some more targeted results that I'm quite interested in. There's that same one that I did before. I wanted to point out that uh, most of the databases will have a citation generator feature. So in Summon, we have this Cite This Item. So you click on that, you choose your citation style. But as I mentioned in class, a lot of the time, you really, really have to watch that uh, they're doing it properly and take a second look at it. So there's nothing to stop you from copying and pasting that and then going and cleaning it up. And of course, if you do want to clean it up, you can go right back out to the library homepage, click on the site sources. I'm going to pick APA. I'm going to go to articles here and I think my article had about three to five authors. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go here and I'm going to compare my generated search or citation or one that I did to myself and just make sure that I've been placing everything in the right spot and just giving it a double check. Okay, so I've got a couple better results here. I can also apply some limiters and filters down the side. You can also limit by publication date if you're only interested in more recent things. You have lots and lots of different options. So again, if I'm interested in this one, I can click on the more detail. But what I think I want to do is click on the full text online and actually see what's going on here. Really encourage you when you find articles that you like, make sure that you save them so that you never ever have to go looking for them again. In this case, we do have a PDF, so I can go ahead and open that one and save it. And of course, if I'm trying to decide whether something is scholarly, what I can do is I can go back out to the library homepage, click on Guides, click on Evaluate Sources, and you click on this Evaluating Articles tab, and it's going to give me some tips on how to make that judgment for myself. In particular, one thing I really like about this page is this table that gives you a handy at-a-glance uh, tool that will show you some of those things that you're going to be looking for. And I promise once you've done it a couple of times, it does get easier. So this was a sum and search. Now one thing that's really important to remember in women and gender studies again is that our stuff can live in different places. There's different fields of study that are looking at our issues. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the women and gender studies uh, guide and we're going to go and look in the articles here. So what we've done is we've picked a, a list of databases that we think are really good for women and gender studies. So I'm going to click here. And the reason I want to point this one out is because this gender studies database, which is small but very specific to our field of study, the last time I checked it wasn't talking to someone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this. I'm going to get right into the database. And one nice thing about many of these sort of big databases is that they'll allow you to add a few more. So if I click on Choose Databases up here, I can grab a few other things. So because it's a medical related thing, I'm going to pick on CINAHL. If you're wondering what is in some of these databases, you can just hover over this little thing and find out what's there. I'm definitely going to pick this one for my topic. 
maybe I want to add a sociology one and you can go through here and pick all sorts of different ones. With our topic, if I was really going after the medical school angle, I'd probably pick some of these education specific ones. I'm going to leave them for now. If I need to go back, I can just change it again. So now I've got a slightly different, uh, larger sort of base that I can cover and I'm just going to go and replicate part of my search. This is smaller, so I'm just going to start out a little broader. And I came up with about 159, but one thing I might notice is that the results maybe are a bit more relevant in a more subject specific database. There's no one way of doing everything in every search. It's up to you to go and try and, and do a couple of experiments, see how things are going, and of course if you need any help you're going to let us know. This database gives us our subject um, headings right here which is really nice. If we don't have the full text in this particular database, you're going to click on this and see if we've got it. If not, um, if you've given yourself enough time, you can do an interlibrary loan. And of course, we have lots of limiters and filters down the side here. So if you don't want results from 1885, you can bring that up. Again, it really completely depends on your particular topic, how far you want to go with that. You can limit it by source type. And if you're having any trouble with your subjects, you can always click here and see some of the subject headings within our, our search and use any of those ones if you feel that they'll make a difference for you. So I think that was all I wanted to show you. Oh wait, I lied. Okay, so Glenda's group in Asia 1000, you have a couple of ebooks that are available to you with some of the required readings. My last little tip to you is when you're searching for a very specific book, I would bypass Summon, go straight into the library catalog, and I'm going to do a title search here, Conflict and Peace in South Asia, and do my title search bringing me into the record for this book and it happens to be an ebook. I just click on this link. A quick note about ebooks. Um, Glenda and I were in contact ahead of this class. I tried my best to get multi-seat ebooks so that you could all use it at the same time. That's not always possible for everyone. So if you go into any of the ebooks and it bumps you out and says you can't get in, just try again later and hopefully you'll be able to access that. So one last time. Let's just go back to the home page here. Um, please let us know if you need any help. This Ask Us button here, and again, you can visit us in person or you can contact us using all of these different methods. There's lots and lots of options and we're here to help you. So happy searching, good luck with all your assignments, and we hope to see you or hear from you in the library.